Hello everyone. Today we have the second part of the said lecture. We will talk today about the spine injuries, as these injuries are quite severe and they include fractures and dislocations of spine. Uh, of course, they can be non-complicated and complicated in cases when they are associated with damage of the spinal cord, a cauda equina. So the commonest site for these injuries is thoracolumbar segment. Uh, this, this another common area is lower cervical area. So up to 20% of all spinal injuries result in neurological deficit in the form of paraplegia in the thoracolumbar spine injuries or if the injury occurred in the cervical level, usually quadriplegia is developing. In many cases, patients doesn't recover completely from this deficit. Let's talk now about the anatomy of vertebral column. So the vertebral column consists of 33 vertebrae, 7 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral, and four coccygeal. They are joined together by ligaments and muscles. Each vertebra consists of the anterior part, its body, and posterior neural arch. So the central part of cancerous bone and uh, it has also its cortex, of the peripheral part of the body, which contains consists of a compact bone. The margins of upper and lower surfaces of vertebral body are seeking to form vertebral rings. Posteriorly we have neural arch which consists of pedicles, lamina, spinous processes and articulated facets. So actually there is a joint uh, from both sides of the vertebra or posterior sides that are formed with the so-called facet joints. Between those two vertebras on the anterior part and between their bodies is a strong caution which we call intervertebral disc. This disc consists of annulus, fibrosus and nucleus pulposus which is located on the center of the disc. So annulus fibrosus is made up of fibrous tissue is protecting the nucleus pulposus which is inside. Also vertebral column forms a so-called vertebral canal in which the spinal cord is located as well as we have nerve roots that are going out of it on each level. So the compression of the spinal cord or nerve roots may cause neurological deficit. So when the spinal cord or nerve roots are compressed or even irritated, neurological problems can occur. And it depends a lot from the stability of the vertebral column and the fracture which occurred. There are some anatomical peculiarities for different parts of vertebral column. The cervical or level is considered to be less stable uh, as are articular facets that are forming facet joints are very mob mobile and if the ligaments and capsule are torn, the facets of the upper vertebra can be easily moved forward, causing a dislocation. In thoracic spine, the inferior articular facets face backward and the superior facets face forward. This alignment, together with the posterior ligamentous complex and ribs, makes the thoracic spine very stable and hence dislocations 
are quite rare in this area. In the Lumbo region, the facets are large, strong. The lower facets of the vertebra face laterally, and they are surrounded by the upper facets of the lower vertebra, which face medially. This makes it more stable than the cervical spine. There is a three-column concept of the stability. According to this concept, the stability of vertebral column depends from the structures that are forming anterior, medial, and posterior column. So if the injury involves only one column, anterior or posterior, this injury is considered to be stable. Anterior or medial, or middle and posterior, so these injuries are considered to be unstable. So let's see which structures are forming anterior column. That is anterior longitudinal ligament, anterior part of vertebral body, anterior part of intervertebral disc. Post posterior column is formed with spinous processes, uh, ligaments which connect spinous processes, transverse processes, intertransverse uh, ligaments, and uh, middle column is formed with a posterior part of vertebral bodies, posterior part of intervertebral disc, and posterior uh, longitudinal ligaments. So, according to this concept, if you have a fracture of the vertebral body, which is compression wedge fracture, and the stage of compression is first or second, we have a compression on the anterior part of vertebral body and anterior column is involved only. So, these fractures are considered to be stable. But if the third degree of compression occurred, or both vertebral bodies of two or three vertebras are compressed, in this case is usually anterior and middle column is involved, and these fractures are considered to be unstable. That means that the damage of the spinal cord or nerve roots uh, is more common for these cases, and mostly they require surgical management. So now let's talk about the mechanism of injury. So we have some common mechanisms, and usually these uh, fractures occur due to the fall from the height. It may be a fall from the tree or from a high building, and Usually, a uh, compression fracture of the vertebral body occurred. For patients with osteoporotic bones, for old ladies, uh, it may be a common fall when walking. So, due to osteoporosis, the vertebral body is weak and a compression fracture may occur. So, other modes include a falling of a heavy object on the back, for example, a rock or a concrete block, or also can occur within sport injuries. For a cervical spine, a very common injury is uh, falling into the, uh, jumping into the hollow water when the patient hits the bottom of a river with his head or neck, and Due to this, cervical spine is usually fractured and usually the patient may die at the place of injury due to the acute heart insufficiency and breathing insufficiency. As in this level, the centers that regulate this activity are located. Another uh, very common mechanism is uh, driving a car. When another car hits a person, on the backside, it is so-called 
a whiplash injury. And another common cause for these fractures is for motorcyclists, they are riding a bicycle or motorcycle in the forest and they got the injury with a branch of a tree. But actually, most of these uh, injuries, according to their mechanism, can be divided into several types as flexion injury, flexion rotation injury, vertical compression injury, extension injury, flexion distraction injury, direct injury, indirect injury due to sudden muscle contracture. Most of these mechanisms occur due to indirect injury. And many of them as falling from the height are uh, causing a vertical compression injury of the area of lower thoracic area and higher lumbar area. So when we are classifying fractures of vertebras, first of all, we should mention the level of the fracture and uh, is it complicated or non-complicated. So according to the levels, there may be injuries of thoracic, lumbar, or cervical spine. So it may be a thoracic or lumbar injury fracture, which is stable without paraplegia, or which is unstable, or fracture dislocation with paraplegia. Maybe injuries of cervical spine it can also be a stable injury without paraplegia, or it may be unstable fracture or dislocation with quadriplegia, as also it may be a whiplash injuries, which are usually complicated with neurological symptoms. Also, we can uh, classify these uh, fractures according to the anatomical structures that were broken. So we mentioned which part of vertebra is fractured. So the most common type is a fracture of vertebral body, so-called a wage compression fracture. Other possible options are fractures of spinous processes, fractures of transverse processes, fractures of pedicles or lamina. And if you talk about these fractures, so the most dangerous are fractures of lamina or pedicles, as these bone fragments can pierce the uh, spinal cord or can compress the spinal canal and spinal cord and cause neurological symptoms. If we will talk about spinous process fractures or transverse process fractures, these are usually goes with uh, pain at the fracture site, but they don't cause significant problems due to injury of spinal cord. And they can be treated in, as outpatient in polyclinics or at home. Vice versa, if we have fractures which are unstable, these should be taken to the hospital. And for many unstable fractures, the surgical treatment should be performed. The most common type of fracture is a fracture of vertebral body, so-called wedge compression fracture, and it goes in three degrees. So the first degree, which is mostly stable, it is when the height of the vertebral body is decreased on one third. For the second degree, the height of the vertebral body is decreased on one half. And for the second third degree, the height is decreased on two thirds. So these are considered to be unstable fractures and they require surgical stabilization. So let's talk about stable fractures without paraplegia. So this is the most common type of fracture and usually it occurs in the lower thoracic area or upper lumbar area. There is a usually a history from a fall from the height or some weight is falling on the back. Uh, 
on examination we can see some bruises locally and hematoma on the back and actually when we're palpating this area we have a localized point of tenderness on the spine also we can see some angulation angular gibbous sometimes is seen at the fracture site so another uh, test that we can perform we can apply a weight bearing along the axis of the vertebral column and for these cases uh, the patient can sit up and in these cases the pain will be increased at the fracture site as well pressing and knotting on the spinous process can cause more increased pain at the fracture site which is local so a general examination also should be made to check the patient if the patient is in a shock or not and some additional injuries of head, chest and abdomen as falling from the height is usually a high energy injury. You also should check about some other fractures and the most common type of fracture which goes along with this fracture may be a fracture of calcaneus which is also common from the, for patients that are falling from the height. You should also check the extremities uh, uh, to see if there is no loss of movement and sensation. So lower extremities can, be, can lose the sensation if there is a fracture of lower thoracic area and upper extremities for fractures of C2, C6 or 7. So also we should check about the bladder because due to the fracture may be a paralysis of the bladder function. So uh, as a first aid this patient should be transferred in the supine position on hard surface. This is on his way to the hospital but in the hospital you also should transfer him in the position on his back. Uh, you shouldn't allow him to stand up or to sit up as the pain can be increased for this activity. So another type of a fracture is a wedge compression fracture. It happens when anterior part of the vertebral body is compressed and posterior ignored. So in those cases, the posterior ligaments are intact and only anterior column is involved. That is why these fractures are called stable fractures. Uh, for these patients, if they have a compression of the first degree, we usually advise a bed rest up to 30 days. For the second degree, bed rest is 45-60 days and for the third degree if it, it is considered to be unstable the bed rest is 75-90 days. We also allow patient in 2-3 weeks perform some physical exercises in horizontal position to strengthen in his muscles and to improve blood supply to fractured vertebras. Another type of fractures, uh, which is uh, called a comminuted fracture or boost fracture, this is a fracture when body of the vertebra is uh, fractured in many pieces. Uh, in many cases, uh, this fracture is quite stable but there may be a comminution and parts of the fragments can go into the canal as you see in this x-ray and uh, they can compress the spinal cord and cause uh, pa a paraplegia or even a spinal shock. That is why for boost fractures we should perform a CT scan determine the position of these bone fragments. But if they are in a good position, so we need a bed rest and later uh, 
a plaster jacket can be applied. So when we're talking about the diagnostics, next step after clinical examination of our patient, we should perform radiological examination. Actually, for most of the fractures, plain X-rays, AP and lateral view should be performed. For detection of vertebral body fracture, wage compression fracture, the most important view is lateral view. So when we look at this view, you should check the anterior part of vertebral bodies, posterior part of vertebral bodies, and actually the compression of the vertebral body, so we can measure its anterior part and its posterior part. So for wedge compression fractures, anterior part will be less. So that indicates on the fracture. When we see that anterior part of the above vertebra is shifted according to the lower vertebras, we can diagnose the anterior dislocation. Note that for vertebral column, when we diagnose a dislocation, we're talking about that uh, above vertebra is dislocated according to the below vertebra. So the treatment of uh, vertebral fractures starts at the pre-hospital stage. When you're taking patient to the hospital, you should immobilize the fracture and if it is cervical level, you should apply a collar. You can also apply some sandbags on both sides of the head when patient is transferred into the trolley. So, of course, in, not in all cases, you are sure about the presence of the fracture. So, modern algorithm of uh, fast medical aid says that in all cases of polytrauma and high energy injuries, you should apply a collar for the cervical spine. In cases where the fracture is present, that will save the patient's life. So even if you think that the fracture is possible for the cervical area, it is better to immobilize it with a shunt collar, or you can make a collar from any material, maybe a hot paper or some plastics uh, covered with uh, cotton and bandages. So at the hospital, when uh, the diagnosis of cervical fracture was proved, there are two options. For unstable fractures, we can apply skeletal traction or skull, or we can use a helison sling traction. For stable fractures, we can immobilize the fracture applying a toracocranial bandage. And by means of this application of this bandage, uh, the patient can be uh, uh, immobilized earlier. For other levels of vertebral column, if fracture occurred, the patient should be transferred to the hospital in the horizontal position, supine on the hard surface. You should not allow him to sit up or to stand up, as if there is a fracture of vertebral body, it can be compressed even more. And for fractures that are non-stable, uh, additional injury of spinal cord and nerve roots can occur. And neurological deficit will progress. Uh, at the hospital for stable fractures, non-surgical treatment is usually uh, administered. These include a bed rest in the supine position, analgetics, and usually from the second day, we apply some reclinator at the area of the Fracture. It can be a pillow or a roll of material 
and it is increasing the height of this reclinator we can use a mechanical device that can gradually increase the inclination at the fracture side that is how it look like by twisting the handle we can increase or decrease the curvature of the inclinator and can gradually uh, increase it also we should apply some analgetics and physiotherapy at the fracture site after some period of blood rest we can apply a plastic corset to make the patient active earlier but fractures that are unstable I require surgical treatment so there were many devices invented for surgical stabilization of fractures and many of them were abandoned because they were not good uh, nowadays we use so-called transpedicular fixation system when the screws are inserted through the pedicles into vertebral bodies and setting in the above on below vertebras and fixing to posteriorly with a plate or a rod so this is a surgical procedure uh, that uh, should be done under image intensifier control these screws are inserted through the pedicles under certain angle not to damage the spinal cord Here is a, another transpedicular fixator, which we call a bridge system. So you see there is a shunt screw, which is inserted in above vertebra. The shunt screws that are inserted in the below vertebra. Here is a special clamp that are connected together with the rod. By means of the, the we can apply fixation of the vertebra that was fractured and also we can restore the height of this vertebra there are some clinical examples of patient with a wedge compression fracture of the third degree if you check the anterior part you will see that it is decreased according to the posterior part on two thirds so actually we have some comminution of the body and this is unstable injury here we see that the height of the vertebra was restored and it was fixed with the transpedicular fixator so two screws were inserted in lower vertebra and two in the upper vertebra and they were fixed with clamps and rods actually this device allows patient to become active since the first days after wound has healed and rehabilitation is much quicker and as you see the restoration of bone anatomy is much better than for non-surgical management So you see another example when the vertebral body was significantly compressed if comparing with be below and above vertebras so in these cases when we have a fracture of severe degree which is unstable you should make a CT scan and CT scan can show you the position of bone fragments and you see we have some comminution there you can see whether the canal is involved uh, compressed with the bone fragments and of course you can plan the surgery so for this case it's not just 
uh, enough to put uh, transpedicular fixator. We should restore significantly depressed uh, vertebral body. So for these cases, we can use metal cages that are filling, filled with bone grafts. These bone grafts are usually taken from iliac crest. And you see, this is a X-ray of the patient after the surgery. You see, the head was restored and metal cage with bone grafts was implanted from the anterior approach and from the posterior approach it was fixed with transpedicular fixate. So thank you very much for your attention.